week on the show, we have mastery consultant and hypno coach Charles West, who has studied alongside Deepak Chopra, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Marissa Peer, to name a few. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that the most important conversations you will ever have is the inner dialogue you have with yourself. The reality is how we speak to ourselves on a daily basis dictates how we feel. So often on a subconscious level, we think of negative emotions or are overly critical with ourselves. Whether it's being overly critical of our appearance or talking ourselves out of our own unlimited potential. When we practice self-love and treating ourselves with kindness and compassion, our inner dialogue begins to change and is replaced with empowering beliefs. Make your mission today to stop yourself anytime you find yourself putting yourself down or being overcritical with yourself. It's only when we embrace ourselves just the way we are that we can step into our most authentic self. As the saying goes, you will never speak to anyone more than you speak to yourself in your head. Be kind to yourself. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. The great thing about your story, and that's why I wanted to talk about some of the trauma you've been through, because that led you to a spiritual path that you're doing now. You're doing some amazing work with Divine Spark Coaching. So tell us about it and how it helps people deal with the unresolved trauma that they have. Sure, sure. Well, as I was coming out of the very dark night of the soul, that I call it, after I received the diagnosis, I got majorly into meditation, all different kinds of meditation, transcendental meditation, and um, also Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditative curriculum. So I, I, I had been, I had already received some inspiration about building a business of my own, but I'd never been an entrepreneur before. I was never a business business guy. I just was, I would study, I would practice, I would learn music, I would, and I would go to auditions and I would book jobs. That's what I did for decades. So, but here I was and I received this download while I was meditating and it said these words, Divine Spark Coaching, Charles, Divine Spark wow. Coaching. And, and I, when I heard that, it was like, ping, I knew it. I knew that that was the direction to aim. And so, yeah, I became a certified life mastery consultant with the Brave Thinking Institute, a rapid transformational hypnotherapist with the Marissa Peer School. And then last year, I also became an Ayurveda and primordial sound meditation teacher with Deepak Chopra. And so I've also studied with Marianne Williamson, Jan Van Zandt, Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have mastery consultant and hypno coach Charles West. As a rapid transformational therapist who has studied alongside Deepak Chopra, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Marisa Peer, to name a few, Charles is using his expertise at his company, Divine Spark Coaching, to help people all over the world to release anxiety, depression, and stress through transformational healing. Charles, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. Darielle, I'm so excited to be here. I'm very excited to talk to you. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yes, we have a lot to talk about, but let's talk about you first. I know you're a life mastery consultant as well as a rapid transformational hypnotherapist. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about your background. Um, you've been through some uh, traumatic experiences like 9-11. I know you're also a cancer survivor. So let's talk about that. Well, yeah. So I moved to New York City in 1993 from the north side of Chicago, where I was raised. And um, I had a very successful looking career on Broadway and doing international and national tours of Broadway shows. And then at the time of 9-11, I lived in the lower West Village of Manhattan. And that morning I got up and I put on the coffee and I heard Katie Couric make, make, make an urgent announcement on the Today Show that a plane had crashed into one of the towers. I went out onto the balcony of my apartment and I looked outside and there were dozens of people down on the sidewalk gazing in horror downtown at what had just happened. I threw on some clothes and by the time I got upstairs to the rooftop of my building, 
I watched both of the towers collapse there in front of me. Jeez. And of course, there were a couple dozen other people up on top of the roof of that building. And we were all just in shock and in horror. And um, I had no voice or ability to express the fear and the, uh, and the anxiety and the pain that I was feeling at that time. I mean, this was 22 years ago. And, you know, back then, people weren't really talking about anxiety and PTSD like, like we are now, mm -hmm. right? And so what I did was I reached out for whatever I could get my hands on to try to numb that pain and numb, numb that fear. Mm -hmm. And that led me ultimately to um, bottoming out and I was confronted with the reality that it's like I needed to get and stay sober. And so I'm so grateful that I've actually been staying. I've, I'm sober now for 18 and a half years mm -hmm. and it's been the greatest blessing of my life. Um, I wouldn't be the man that I am now if I weren't sober. In fact, I probably wouldn't be alive at all. And when I was 12 years sober, um, newly married, I uh, was told that there was a very rare form of vascular cancer that was discovered in areas of my liver. And at that point, I just thought, wow. I mean, like I would pray and I'm like, God, I'm sober for 12 years. I'm being of service. I'm doing all the right stuff in my life. And I just thought, now this, really? Really? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you go through challenge after challenge after challenge. And you, and you say to yourself and to the universe, I know I can do hard things. Right? I know I can do hard things. But it, does it have to be so hard all the time? And I'm so grateful that for the 12 years prior to the cancer diagnosis that I had been doing what I call building spiritual muscles. Mm -hmm. I'd been, I've been journaling. I'd been meditating. I was very surprised that I became a prayerful gentleman. I never had really been very prayerful before, but I became a prayerful gentleman and um, continued to show up to be of service, but I also allowed a level of authenticity about my emotions that I was feeling at the time of the diagnosis. I allowed myself to cry and pray and cry and pray and cry and pray. I remember one time shortly after Dr. Sugiyama, I remember that he was the chief surgeon who told me about this diagnosis, shared it with me. I went into this state of weeping and praying and weeping and praying for a good half hour. And when all of that was done, underneath all the prayers, and it was like, I heard a voice and I, and I knew that all of those years, those 12 years of building spiritual muscles, and another metaphor I use is putting deposits into my spiritual ATM machine, that I was going to be able to call on all of the faith all of all of those deposits, all of those spiritual muscles that I've been building to help to transcend this experience that I was going through mm -hmm. with the cancer diagnosis. And so one thing that I didn't understand when I was acting out and reaching out for 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 alcohol, for drugs, for just acting out to try to numb and overeating, um, it wasn't just the trauma of 9-11 that I was trying to obliterate. Now I understand that it was four decades of unresolved, unspoken pain, going all the way back to when I was four or five years old, and then nine years old, and then 12 years old. And throughout all my teens and 20s, different situations, different things that I'd experienced that caused, that were tra very traumatic experiences for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking about those traumatic experiences, um, you did touch base on it, but I know that you went into a coma because of your alcohol use. But that was a transformational period in your life where you decided to become sober. And I know something transformational happened to you uh, in the hospital that day. So tell us about that. Sure. Well, <clears throat> so yes, I, at the end of a weekend binge, I ended up in a coma. It was... April 20th of 2004, I, I, re I remember the date. And the, the doctors from the hospital 
called up my parents and said, we don't know if Charles is going to make it. He hasn't regained consciousness yet. Well, thank God they, they resuscitated me. And eventually I was taken up to my own room in the hospital. And while I was in the room there, I remember a nurse coming in and checking my vitals, doing check my blood pressure, my pulse and everything. And then she left. And very soon after that, I felt two hands very strongly on my shoulders, shaking me. And I heard a voice resounding. This is not who I created you to be. This is not who I created you to be. This is not who I created you to be over and over and over again. And eventually the, the hands released me and I fell back in the bed and I looked around and there was nobody there. And here I was one month before my 40th birthday and I had been living what looked like a very successful life. You know, I moved to New York and I was on Broadway three months later. I had been doing it. And I realized at the end of that, when I, I was visited, I was, I, I was, I don't know any other way to put it. When I had that experience, that this is not who I created you to be. It was like a very, very harsh and rude awakening that buddy, you have got some healing. You have got some work to do on yourself. You don't have any time to spare. <laughs> you have pushed it as far as you possibly can. You better clean up your act. I have, you know, it's like I knew that I'd been given musical talent and skills and, you know, a certain amount of charisma and writing ability to work to work with in my life. And I understand now that I had taken so many things for granted. Mm -hmm. So many things. And I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. The great thing about your story, and that's why I wanted to talk about some of the trauma you've been through, because that led you to a spiritual path that you're doing now. You're doing some amazing work with Divine Spark Coaching. So tell us about it and how it helps people deal with the unresolved trauma that they have. Sure, sure. Well, as I was coming out of the very dark night of the soul, that I call it, after I received the diagnosis, I got majorly into meditation, all different kinds of meditation, transcendental meditation, and um, also Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditative curriculum. Um, and I began to going to live events of his. And I was at an event in Atlanta. This was July of 2017. And I received received a download. I heard a voice and I had al already been studying um, craniosacral healing work. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I had been, I had already received some inspiration about building a business of my own, but I'd never been an entrepreneur before. I was never a business, business guy. I just was, I would study, I would practice, I would learn music. I would, and I would go to auditions and I would book jobs and that's what I did for decades. So, but here I was and I received this download while I was meditating and it said these words, divine spark coaching, Charles, divine spark. Wow. And, and I, when I heard that, it was like, ping, I knew it. I knew that that was the direction to aim. And so, yeah, I became a certified life mastery consultant with the Brave Thinking Institute, a rapid transformational hypnotherapist with the Marissa Peer School. And then last year, I also became an Ayurveda and primordial sound meditation teacher with Deepak Chopra. And so I've also studied with Marianne Williamson, Ian Van Zant. I've been to Tony Robbins events and Dr. Joe Dispenza. And so the spiritual life that I live, it's like, for me, there's, it's pretty much everything I do. I, I think that you, from the time that you and I have already spent together, Dario, you probably know that I love to share stories and I use metaphors in my mm -hmm. storytelling. And so I think of, I like to live, use this metaphor of living my life like a constant prayer. Mm -hmm. Living my life like a constant prayer. And 
just like constantly just going through life and saying thank you, you know, and not being afraid to shine my bright light like you do. You shine your bright light, you know, and and so the spiritual path that I'm on, which used to feel really slippery and very scary. Now, it's just who I am. Mm -hmm. I allow myself to be deeply spiritual and and pray and worship and celebrate. I allowed my I allow myself to play and have fun. I allow myself to really appreciate the good things in life as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all of that. Mm -hmm. The the one thing that's really stands out in divine spark coaching is the word spark because I feel like that's what your work does. It sparks something within yourself like that inner greatness i know that it, it, it that's what happened for me uh we're going to talk about that in a little bit but before that i want to talk about um rtnt rapid transformational therapy i know you specialize in that so let's talk about that and how that helps to um really get down to the trauma and help you face it yeah yeah so okay so if you go back to early 2018 so the cancer diagnosis had been present for a year and a half, but I had already been building Divine Spark Coaching. And that's when I became, in March of 18, I became a certified life mastery consultant with the Brave Thinking Institute. And I had coaching clients right away. A couple people from the Broadway community, a dear friend of mine who lives um, in Colorado. And, and we coached together for six months and nine months immediately after I got by, back from be, from certification in LA. And things were going great. But as the coaching was going along, I was able to discern that there were aspects of their life that the coaching wasn't able to touch. Mm -hmm. Because the coaching deals with the conscious parts of our mind. And it's crucial. It's really important work you know you google if you google life coaches you know different types of coaches this day you probably would see 50 to 60 different types of coaches out there and all of them deal with the conscious levels of the mind transformational coach vision coach relationship coach career coach and they're all really crucial i have given myself the name as a hypno coach because after i had been a life mastery consultant for about eight months, I realized I needed to find something more. And so a very dear friend of mine, um, who is also a life mastery consultant, we were on the phone and I was telling Denise Michelle, her name is Denise Michelle, and she, she you should have her on your show, by the way. Um, she's in Bali, in Bali right now. She, um, I was telling her about this level of dissatisfaction that I was having, or, you know, realizing that there was something that the coaching wasn't bringing. And she said, well, are, have you ever heard about RTT, Rapid Transformational Hypnotherapy? And I'm like, um, hypnotherapy? And she's like, Marissa Peer, you, have you seen the, the beautiful British lady that's on Facebook, you know, with the ads for RTT? And I'm like, yes, I've... I, I see her, these ads all the time on Facebook. Her? Really? She's like, yes, go to her YouTube channel and watch her TED Talk. Watch a couple other videos of hers from her YouTube channel and see if it speaks to you. Darielle, I watched her TED Talk video. And halfway through, my heart was just roaring at me saying, this is it. Yeah. This is it. And so I immediately registered to train in RCT. And so this was in the very end of 2018. I started the online portion and then got to go to London and I trained with Marissa Peer. Now what, what tra rapid transformational hypnotherapy does? Well, first of all, it's created by Marissa Peer, who is the grand dame of hypnotherapy on the planet. She is incredible. She's a beautiful woman. She's a, and a beautiful person. And I'm grateful to consider her, her a friend of mine. And so she created RTT out of 30 years 
experience of her of being like the top therapist in the UK. And so what it does, it combines traditional hypnotherapy uh, tactics along with NLP, which is neuro linguistic mm -hmm. programming and cognitive behavioral behavioral therapy. It combines those three different therapeutic genres and in a typical RTT session, which ranges anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours long, we are able to purge the subconscious mind of all of these neural pathways that have the conditioning that keep you stuck in your life. And so we're able to purge the subconscious mind of all of that and then surge in through a lot of reframing of the painful memories of reframing of the past. And then we surge in all the love, the light, the truth and the beauty that could have been there all along. And it's, it's really, really life changing. Mm -hmm. I like, I think that's why your work is so powerful is because you deal with this subconscious mind, right? And most people don't realize that most of our thoughts and actions are on our subconscious beliefs, not on our conscious beliefs, because that's why motivation doesn't last when it's on the conscious level. It's the subconscious that really dictates how we act. So uh, I think that's why your work is so powerful. For our viewers that are curious, I know I've been through a session, but for our viewers that are curious, they, they don't know what to expect. Walk us through a hypnosis uh, session with you. So before we actually even get to the session, I send the individual intake forms they fill them out they email them back to me i assess them and i'm able to discern some really powerful tactics and and how to guide them and then we have a video consultation or if you happen to live in new york city which is where i am we can have an in-person consultation usually lasts about 30 to 45 minutes long where we hone in on what the root and core issue for this session is going to be. And so we start off with the, once we get to the session, we start off with the induction process, which as you said, you've experienced. And it is a beautiful floaty experience um, where, see when I, before I, I learned and really studied RTT and learned what hypnotherapy really is, I was very ignorant about what it was, mm -hmm. what it truly is and what it can do. Um, I thought it was like some sort of stage hypnosis thing where yeah. like there's a guy standing on a chair barking like a dog. And, yeah. you know, there are stage hypnos hypnotists that do different types of things like that. And, and it's entertaining. That's not what I do. It's, it's therapeutic and it's transformational. And so the client goes through this, induction process where they go deeper and deeper and deeper into this very beautiful safe warm space of hypnosis and then we go through this process of reviewing memories from their past that are connected to the root issue for that session in the consultation we already will have under we will already have discerned what the root issue is and so we go back to scenes we go back to memories from their past that are connected to the messages that got planted in the subconscious mind that are still keeping them feeling unworthy or anxious or unlovable or eating their feelings or whatever it is feeling out of control or unlovable and so we go through um, a reframing process of all of the messages that their subconscious mind and other places in their bodies where these mess messages got stuck. Because as you, you felt in the session that we did, Dario, you said that you actually felt it in other places in your body, not just in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we're doing a full-on session, the client will discern and I will even ask them, so where else are you feeling this, this pain? Where else are you noticing this tightness or this stuck energy? 
is are you notice tune into your heart is there any heartbreak going on mm. almost always there will be yes are you feeling any tension or squeezing in your hips are you feeling a clenching in your jaw or stress in your mind and they focus in on that and i support them in reframing the messages that have gotten stuck in their minds and elsewhere in their body so that we go through more different types of re reframing processes i do there's an inner child process as well where they are this is after we visited all the scenes from the past and however old the client was in those scenes those younger versions of them are sitting with them and so the client gets to nurture gets to love on them the the client gets to speak to them and give them a pep talk give them a give them a um speak to them in loving ways that mm -hmm. they always wish they had had mm -hmm. and it's and it's really a game changer mm -hmm. absolutely it is a game changer and i was a little bit skeptical when i first did the session with you i didn't know what to expect mm -hmm. and in the beginning of the session i tried to keep my guard up like I, I was trying to keep my guard up and then it just slowly started to dissolve my guard. Um, I was also hesitant about sharing my experience, but I feel that by sharing my experience, it can help other people. And that's what my show is about, is about inspiring and being truthful. So I'm gonna share a little bit about my experience. I felt that when you took me back to these different stages of from my childhood to you know adolescence, all of these different periods in my life, what my takeaway was, was that I always thought that confidence was being confident in how you look or your abilities. That's something I've always had. I've always been really confident, but I didn't realize that self-love is a whole different thing. It's about appreciating yourself, how far you've come, giving yourself a pat on the back, the, your self inner self-talk, right? It's not just about the outside, it's your inner self-talk. And when you took me back to all these experiences and you told me to put my hand on my heart, that's when I felt this this radiation through my body. It was so transformational. Um, and even just talking about it, like my heart is pounding just talking about it. And I left your session just feeling so empowered and so filled with self-love. And I, I could look back on the experiences that I, I went through and I was like, wow, you know, I'm so strong. I went through all of these things. You know, I faced so many fears. And I have this different appreciation for myself now where I actually really appreciate myself. Like I feel empowered from your session and it's incredible. I didn't expect to feel like that. I thought it was first, you know, just um, it would be surface level, but it was very impactful. What was your takeaway from our session? Oh, uh, well, Dariel, first of all, I'm so grateful that it was so powerful and healing for you. Yeah. And it was so much fun for me to not only to to share that experience with you but we got to get to know each other yeah a lot but you know when we did this but so i could feel and i could discern that your walls were up at first yeah. i could tell mm -hmm. i could tell and i have the ability to hold the space do you know what i mean when mm -hmm. i say holding the space yeah because mm -hmm. some people don't so for anybody who's watching that might not know like I'm able to hold the space from almost like I, from a lighthouse view. It's like I can hold the space and understand. I understand the struggle. Mm -hmm. So many people these days, especially since the pandemic, so many people are struggling with different forms and manifestations of anxiety and stress and are acting out in different ways. And I understand it. I know what that's like. I have come out the other side of all of that. And I've been living a really lovely, beautiful life, still have challenges, still have, you know, still go through experience of, you know, my mom passing away a year, you know, almost two years ago and, you know, going through different things like that. But the ability to hold the space for someone and like, like I did for you at the very beginning of the session that we did mm -hmm. allowed you to just release like and feel and know that you were in a safe space mm -hmm. and whoever it is that is wanting to explore any type of of therapy any type of work like that must feel safe absolutely yeah. it's mm -hmm. absolutely imperative and 
I'm grateful to know that I'm able to hold and create a safe space so that you were able to tune into these three beautiful memories mm. that you went back to under hypnosis. It's not like you were thinking about them, but I, I encouraged you, I invited you to summon them from your subconscious mind. And they were like, ching, right. Because you didn't have to search for them, did you? No. No, they were just right there. Yeah. And I asked you different questions about the different memories that were coming up and what was happening and what was going on in them. And I could see there were little, there was an occasional little tear forming in the corner of your eye. Mm -hmm. And you just let it sit there. Mm -hmm. And and I knew she's all in now. She's yeah. all <laughs> she's she's all in. Yeah. And I could tell by the time we got to the third memory that you like you were sitting differently. Mm -hmm. You were sitting up and you were like, but I could also tell. That, you, that there was a place within you and you use the word, I felt a little overwhelmed at the end yes, of it. Yes, very felt overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Because most people aren't accustomed to feeling and experiencing this level yeah. of energetic expansion within themselves. Yes. That's such a deep level of confidence and self-assuredness. Like you said, you thought that confidence was like, Oh, well, the body that I have or how much money I'm making or mm. how many Broadway credits I have on my resume or whatever it is, you know, these days, you know, how many Instagram followers I have or whatever it is. And all of those things are really good and aren't unimportant, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not unimportant. But what is important is that we nurture and take care of and love ourselves first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we each have been given a different package, you know, in our bodies to live within. Mm -hmm. And in the grand scheme of the universe, however many decades we have on this planet, it's going to be gone like that, you know? And so I want to make the most of it. I want to make as big of a difference as I can. And, and even, you know, in the lives of anybody that I might come across, even if it's just exchanging a smile, or, you know, when I go out into New into Manhattan or go out on this ride, the subway in my backpack, I almost always have a couple extra protein bars and an extra bottle of water because almost always I'm going to come across somebody that needs something, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and I and I just, you know, I give it to them. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most special thing about your work is that you really want to help people. You're coming from a space where you've experienced these things and you're compassionate. So even during the session, you're not judging, you're, you're, you're helping the person go through these, these emotions. And I think that's really a beautiful take because I think so often we look to the external to fix things. We think, okay, we have a better job. We have a bigger house. We have a better relationship. But when we move internal, and as you said, I think that feeling um, that I felt was that expansion, almost an enlightenment in my heart, which was I've never felt that level. Even right now, I feel it speaking to you. Um, I think it's a, on an energetic level is that expansion in your heart. It's just open, just pure love coming from a space of pure love and helping other people. And I think, I think that's why your business is so successful is because you're really being of service to other people. I also want to talk about you know, in biblical terms or even, you know, law of attraction, we talk a lot about every single person having greatness in them and being an image of God himself. So let's talk about that and how Divine Spark um, has aligns with that messaging. Mm, that's such a great question. And this topic is really has been a pivotal healing point for me in my life. So, for I, I, I just need to speak first about my experience growing up in the church that I was raised in, mm -hmm. and because um, there, there was I was raised with a lot of love from my parents in, in my household growing up, and the church that I was raised in was a very fundamental Christian church on the north side of Chicago, and um, there were very powerful 
and harmful messages about this vengeful and punishing God. And I remember sitting in the church with my mom right here and my dad's right here. And I'm like four, maybe five years old. And the preacher up there on this would be bellowing down about the seven deadly plagues and all the waterways of the world would be flowing with blood and men would be covered with oozing blisters. And I was horrified and I'd look around the church and I would see everybody nodding in affirmation about what the preacher just said. And I'm terrified. And I remember going up to the Sunday school teacher after the service that day and I would ask her in little four or five year old Charlie and would say, ma'am, ma'am, why would God do something so scary like the plagues? And she goes, shh, shh, Charlie, now you're a good little Christian soldier boy, right? And I would say, well, I'm trying to be, ma'am. And she would then say, well, then we don't ask questions. Mm. So here I was four or five years old and that message was planted in my subconscious mind that whenever I was scared or confused or afraid, I'm not allowed to speak it. I'm not allowed to ask questions about it. And I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I am wrong. And I'm just supposed to stuff it. And that's what I did. And so I went through the first four decades of my life with this deep, heavy burden in my heart, believing subconsciously that I was an abomination, even though I was a good guy, very talented. I showed up, I performed on Broadway. I did all this good stuff. It's not like I was a jerk. I was a really good guy, mm -hmm. but I carried all of these subconscious beliefs, beliefs about what I was told about God. Then through the early stages of my recovery my, in being and staying sober, and then also a lot of other, you know, reading lots and lots of different types of books and taking courses and training, you know, going to see Marianne Williamson, you know, give talks about on the A Course in Miracles and all of these things, I began to tune in that there is something that I can call God, doesn't necessarily connect to a gender for me, but I can pray to Father, Mother, God, or you know, I connect to, to God. And when I'm speaking of the divine presence of the universe, it's not something that's outside of us. Mm -hmm. I see it in you, Dariel. Mm -hmm. I see it in myself looking in the camera right now. Mm -hmm. I see it in the construction workers that are doing construction on the streets outside. And I send love to them whenever I hear a fire truck going by. I know that they're going somewhere urgent or an ambulance, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm send, I send love. And there's a quality of authenticity that comes. And it, one of the, one of the ways that I describe it is that I am home within myself. Mm -hmm. there, there is no void to fill here. I have nothing to prove to anyone. And I would say about five years ago, I was meditating one day and I received another download. And the download was this, <clears throat> you ready? It was, I humbly own my magnificence as a lightning rod of divine energy. Hmm. And I heard it and I'm like, oh, I grabbed my journal and I wrote it down so I didn't forget it. And I read it out loud, I said, I humbly own my magnificence mm. as a lightning rod of divine energy. Now think about it. Mm. Think about it. everybody watching. Humbly own my magnificence. Really? Is that possible? As a lightning rod of divine energy, not a little magnet, but a lightning rod. And then I started to ask myself other questions. Is it possible to be, if I can humbly own my magnificence, can I humbly own my talent? Can I humbly own my charisma? Can I humbly own my playfulness? Can I, yeah, and I can humbly own all of those things, but it starts with being humble. And so I believe just like with you, Dariel, you, the way that you use your presence and use your voice to make a difference in the lives of others mm -hmm. in your unique way, that's what I'm here for too. 
I'm all in. Yeah. And so being able to share our unique qualities with other people that are out there right now, wherever they are, whether they're in, in, in Canada or the US or the in Europe, India, you know, I'm so grateful that with Divine Spark Coaching, especially since the pandemic, I my business has skyrocketed and I have worked with clients from Tasmania and Australia to Tokyo, Hawaii, all around the US, all around Canada, um, Brazil, Israel, all around Europe. And I never would have imagined that I would be able to have wear the wear the badge of international mogul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's what I am now. I'm an international mogul. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what you said reminds me of uh, Marianne Williamson's quote about being afraid of her own greatness, right? That's what her yep. quote is. Who am I to yep. be smart, beautiful, successful? I think that's one of the biggest things most of us have is like, we don't feel that we're worthy of greatness, but it really lies in each and every one of us. It lies in me, it lies in you. And it's really accepting that humbly. <laughs> so I, I, I yeah. Yeah, it's actually and I like that you say you're like a lightning rod because you really are. You could feel that spark. I want to talk about some of your programs. You have a ton of different programs that tackle anxiety, depression um, and just getting over those limiting uh, beliefs. So let's talk about the different programs you have. Sure. Well, so the first step, as, as with any anyone who might even be working with me, is they send me an email and then I send them the intake forms and then we have a consultation. So once I've assessed their, their forms, we've had the consultation during the consultation, I will share with them my assessment and my thoughts about which of my services would best support what they want to achieve and accomplish what they want to let go of and what they want to feel more of in their lives. You know, so, I have several different courses through the Brave Thinking Institute that I'm certified to teach and to train. Um, one of them is called Dream Builder. One of them is called Life Mastery. Another one is called um, Into Your Genius. I mean, they're really, really wonderful coaching programs. Then there's RTT packages. Mm -hmm. And I do them as either a package of three, six, or ten. Most people get a three pack of mm -hmm. sessions. Some people will get a, a do a sit buy a six six or a ten pack, and actually gift some of the sessions to family members or friends as mm -hmm. a gift. Like I've had quite a pe few people do that. Mm -hmm. And so the RTT sessions, the rapid transformational hypnotherapy sessions, you can do those by yourself. You know, by themselves without coaching connected to it. So there's coaching. And then there's the RTT. Over the last over three and a half years, since I've also been a rapid transformational hypnotist, it's the combination of the coaching and the RTT that creates my hypno coaching packages. And if you, when you go to my website, which is charleswest.co, and you look at all of the video testimonials that are on there of people that have gone through my hypno coaching packages, um, you will see that these are the ones that bring the greatest results. So in a hypno coaching package, say like if you, if you wanted to do a three month hypno coaching package, what mm -hmm. that looks like is this every month for three months, we do one hypnotherapy session. Mm -hmm. Usually it's the third or fourth week of the month mm -hmm. and all of the rest of the weeks are coaching. Okay. So, we get to develop a really wonderful relationship, you know, coach and client. I get to really understand what's going on. I get to give you exercises, meditations. We do exercises and, and, and things in the moment during the session. And I give you writing exercises to do on your own as well. Mm -hmm. And so month two and month three are continuations of that same cycle where we go deeper and deeper into the coaching exercises. And then the second RTT session, and then the third month, the third RTT session. And so I've had a couple clients that have finished their three month RTT, their uh, hypno coaching program, and have reported that 
they are different. They are completely realigned and it felt like it was comparable to five years of therapy, of traditional type therapy, where because the coaching, working on the conscious parts of the mind and the RTT working on the subconscious together, that is the game changer. Mm -hmm. I mean, my 25 minute session felt like it was uh, three months. It was that it was that impactful. And I know um, I really encourage my viewers to try this out because if you're really committed to personal development and becoming the best you can be, then this is the program for you. And I know that you're giving my viewers a discount. So let's talk yes, about that. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. So for the first five people, that go to my website, charleswest.co. If you scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, you're going to say, drop me a line. You're going to, you know, where you can send me an email right there for the first five people to go to my website and send me, send me an email. I will give you 10% off my hypno coaching packages, three, six, nine, or 12 months. And just mention in your email that just mentioned Dariel. And then I will be able to I would be happy to give a 10% discount to f the first five viewers. Amazing. We're going to put that information as well, your information, so our viewers uh, yeah. can check out your website. And, you know, I always like to end the segment on a inspirational note. So for anyone that's watching this segment that is just going through a hard time and, and they're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, what would you say to inspire them? Hmm. <sighs> I would ask them if they have, have done a gratitude list, mm -hmm. what was one of the things? Simply having, because there's a lot of people that are struggling these days mm -hmm. and I get it. And there's a lot of people that don't feel like they're being seen or they're mm -hmm. being heard or appreciated. And so I know that if we can go use a notebook or a journal or something and just write down 10 things that we're grateful for. And if you have a friend or a family member or, or someone that you're close with that you feel comfortable doing this, write your gratitude list, take a picture of it, and then text it to them. It will increase your sense of gratitude because gratitude that is shared magnifies mm -hmm. and so guess what over the last 10 years since i've been offering this suggestion to people you you might not you there's no way you could know this dario but there are literally i don't know hundreds or thousands of people out there these days that are doing this very thing because it just it is continuing to spread and more and more people are doing it and so it's kind of like a gratitude challenge, but it's something that helps to nurture your soul. Also, another thing that I would offer is if you are an iPhone user, I've created an app and it's called the Divine Spark ATM and it's free. So you can go to my website and on the home page of my website, you'll see a button where it'll say download the Divine Spark coaching app for your iPhone. It's free. Click on it and it'll take you right to the app store, right to the app. And then you can download it onto your phone. And what it is, it's an app version of a tool that I've been using for about 17 years, Dariel. And I'll just show, so show you with you what, what this tool does. It's a way of keeping track of the deposits you make into your spiritual bank account. I used to use a little leather flip pad to like, if I made my bed, I do a little, a mm -hmm. little check mark. If I ate a healthy breakfast, if I paid my bills on time, if I wasn't late for an audition. And I realized that as I was making deposits into my spiritual ATM, my sense of appreciation and self-worth was increasing. Mm -hmm. And so I, connected with an app developer a couple years ago and we worked on it almost two for almost two years and I launched it this last fall. And so what it is, it's, it's really an app version of that. And also you get to see me and a, um, a virtual version of me 
as your bank teller wow. in the end, kind of coaching you through, you know, how to make deposits into your spiritual ATM. And you get to unlock inspirational videos of me wow. giving you coachings and stuff and also inspirational quotes. Ooh, I love that. Spiritual deposits. I mean, Stephen Covey always talks about private victories. That's what builds confidence, right? It's the private victories. It's making our bet. It's, it's making that decision to make a change. I, I, so I like that. I think that's actually very impactful and inspiring for, for anyone going through a hard time. Even writing a list of gratitude, as you said, just it's, sometimes we take things for granted. And when we don't have them, we're like, wow, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. whether it's you know, even in our body, we have a headache. And when we don't have a headache, all of a sudden we appreciate it, you know? So I think it's those little, uh, just appreciation for the little things. It definitely instantly uh, boosts happiness. So I love that. <laughs> Charles, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been such a pleasure. You're such a light worker and just like a vessel of inspiration. And um, I'm very inspired by you and your work. And I'm so glad we crossed paths. Well, Darielle, you're an angel. And so I, I appreciate being here with you today. And I look forward to more connections with you and also hearing from your viewers as well. Absolutely. We will definitely be in touch. Thank you, Charles, so much. <laughs> Thank you. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live to YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm.